So I had this idea. What if we tried to implement Russell's paradox in Python? What does that even mean? It, if you think about what uh, we did with Russell's paradox, we defined this weird set and it's like the set of all sets that don't contain themselves and it seems like a wildly abstract thing but you know python gives you a lot of power you know you can have a list that contains itself as one of its elements have you ever seen this it's a pretty cool idea let me just implement it real quick so here's a list uh one two three no problem i can print the list okay there it is i'll run it okay there's the list and now uh if i were to do l dot append L, so I appended the list to itself. This is totally fine, it runs, it uh, doesn't matter. Um, can I print it? Let's just check, what happens if I print it now? Um, <laughs> it does this weird thing where it prints this, like, oh yeah, by the way, dot, 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 you know, etc. <laughs> you know what I mean, because if it were to blow this up and print the list, it would keep going recursively. And so Python lets you do that. It doesn't, it doesn't cause any kind of problems. So, you know, maybe we can try to implement sets that contain themselves and sets that don't contain themselves and see what kind of trouble we get into when we um, encounter Russell's paradox in the wild. Now, uh, lists and sets are different. If we wanted to just use Python sets, uh, we'd be in trouble because no Python sets can contain sets because sets are not hashable. Um, but, you know, we don't have to use Python sets. We can make our own class. So let's do that. Let's make a class which is going to behave like a, kind of like a set. Um, and uh, I would really like to have some nice infinite sets. If, it was, if everything is just finite sets, the world is kind of easy. Um, well, at least maybe, I don't know if that's true. Um, but I'd like to have a set where I can just tell you what the membership test is, and then the set will be all the elements that pass the membership test, right? The membership test is a function. If it were, turns true, then the element is in the set. So that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to define this class, and when I initialize it, um, I'm just going to pass it the membership test. I'll call it member test, and I'll store the member test. So self dot member test. Uh, yeah. Okay. So I've stored it, and now um, now I can make some some of my weird sets. Um, uh, already, I've gotten everything I need here. So let's make a really simple one. Let's call it fizz. Uh, and yes, this is a reference to fizzbuzz. And so remember that if you've seen the fizzbuzz problem, uh, and hopefully you've seen it, um, it's a very simple problem. But fizz will be all the, let's say, integers, let's say natural numbers, mod three. So, or uh, that, who's, uh, sorry, divisible by three. So all the multiples of three. Um, so how would I do that? I guess I would write my set and I would pass it a function. Oh, I need a function here. Um, so I've got a function multiple of three and it returns, uh, okay, if, if n mod three equals zero, return true, else return false. Okay, this is the, direct literal thing we wanted to do, but of course you should never write code like this. This is a terrible, terrible thing to do. Uh, anytime you see if this return true, else return false, don't do that. Just write it as return this, right? Because this is an expression that evaluates to a Boolean, evaluates a true or false, so it gives us exactly what we want. All right, so now I'm gonna make a set which uh, takes this as the membership test and uh, we can check if some things are in here it's a little awkward but we can do it right because uh, three should be in there so it should be for instance that fizz dot member test of three should be true so if i run it okay it finished you see at the bottom there it says it finished it ran i like to just put a little print statement down here so that i really know it got through all the asserts and it says okay all right I'm spiking the audio a little bit. I apologize for that. Let me get this down. All right, I just get very excited about this stuff. It's too much fun. All right, um, all right. So uh, we should check that it also works for not, right? So for things that shouldn't work. Well, let's do another one that does work, and then one that doesn't. So it should be like not fizz dot member test uh, say five. Okay, and it all works fine. This is this is not so 
so nice, not so Pythonic. What I'd really like to do, because I'm trying to model things I was doing in set theory, I should be able to write my code in a way that looks like the way I would describe sets, which would mean I wouldn't have this like dot member test. I would just ask, is it in the set? Um, what, what I really want then is something like this. I'd like it to be like three in fizz. Now this doesn't work. Um, it, it gives me a weird error. It says it's not iterable, but that's just Python desperately trying to figure out how to test membership, right? It looks for an iterator. If it doesn't find something else first, and that other thing that's looking for is a contains function. So if this magic method contains, dunder contains, if you implement this, then you'll be able to use um, the in, right? I could just, I won't, I'll, I'll implement it incorrectly here for a second just to run it. And you said, it says, okay, it all works. Um, three is in fizz, um, but if I try to make this one, it will actually return, it will give me an error because it's gonna return true every time it sees the in. Um, let me re rewrite all these assertions though in my nice Pythonic way. And now it's pretty clear what this function should actually do. It should just run the member test on the element that you gave it. So what does that look like? It's just uh, self.member test on element. Hmm, good. All right. And it runs, it all works. Okay, so now uh, I've created this kind of set like object. I pass it a function, which is a member test, uh, membership test. And now I can test um, if an element is in that set. It's a pretty okay start. Um, uh, I can do, uh, I mean, if I've done fizz, I better do buzz, right? I just have to, right? So buzz is gonna be the multiples of five. Um, and I could write the function up here. I could do, whoops, I could do some a multiple of five function here, but let's just do it in line. And the easiest way to do it in line is to just define the function using a lambda expression. All right, so a lambda expression is just an expression. When you evaluate it, it comes out to a function. So it creates a function here that's gonna just pass to um, the initializer for my set. So um, x mod five equals zero, right? So the remainder when dividing by five is zero, so it's a multiple of five. And um, I can check that uh, five is in buzz, run it, good. Um, I can check that uh, um, this number is in buzz and it works, right? So I know it because it ends in five, it has to be a multiple of five, it better be in there. And I just better check the other, the negative case as well. Um, which would be like, okay, so it should not be the case that three is in buzz. All right, and again, this is not a Pythonic way to write this code. Really, I should write this as not in, so that uh, it flows better, right? It even looks like a single binary relation, like not in, and um, it does exactly what you would hope it does, <laughs> okay? It checks the three is not in there, and it runs, and it works, um, and we're good to go. So, um, all right, so, I've got fizz, I've got buzz. Um, we could jump ahead to Russell's paradox, but this is just too much fun. We've got to do fizz buzz. And I could write another one for fizz buzz, um, but uh, oh, I could also get fancy here, right? Because if fizz buzz is going to be the multiples of 15, that is three and five, I could make a really general way of combining these sets um, by just defining this and operation, right? To make uh, intersections. So. If I want to do that, I could just implement the magic method dunder and all right, it takes two um, it takes two arguments right, that right the self and some other right? and it's going to return just a new set and uh, this set has to have a new membership test and so what's the membership test? It is just uh, I'll define it as a lambda again. It should be that x is in self and X is in others. Okay, so that should work. And I think uh, having this and function, I can just define fizzbuzz. In a really simple way, I'll just say fizzbuzz equals fizz intersect buzz. Um, does it work? Does it work? Let's check. Uh, 15 in fizzbuzz? Yes. Uh, how about... Uh, 
Mm, let's have a bigger multiple of three. How about 9,015? I think that's a multiple of 15. Okay, and, uh, and let's pick one that's not. So just something simple like six is not in fizz buzz. It all works. Okay, so that's fizz and fizz and buzz and fizz buzz. And, and so my little set data structure does kind of what I want. I give it a function, which is a membership test. And it can tell me now, um, given an element, if my element's in the set, and I can even combine them. And so uh, I can actually do fizzbuzz, this classic fizzbuzz problem here. If I is in fizzbuzz, oops, fizzbuzz, we'll print fizzbuzz. Otherwise, else if, elif in Python, I is in uh, fizz, we'll print uh, fizz, and if, Otherwise, if I is in buzz, we'll print buzz, and otherwise we print I, right? Uh, else, final clause, print I, right? There it is. Okay, fizz buzz. And if I run it, and we, I can bring this up here, and you see, right here, uh, it seems like it did the right thing. I started at zero. Sometimes that problem starts at one, but you should start at zero, right? Um, there you go. Pretty good, FizzBuzz. But we don't care about FizzBuzz. Actually, it's not why we're here. We're here to learn about Russell's Paradox. So um, get rid of this nonsense. Um, hmm. Now, I need to make a set that contains itself. <clears throat> or at least I want to make a set that doesn't contain itself. Hmm. We need a membership test, right? And we know how to write this membership test. So we can just do it. Um, doesn't contain self. Okay, you pass it, uh, hopefully a set, and it just says uh, not in X. Okay, there it is. There's the membership test. And I can assert that F, um, for instance, um, fizz, the fizz set, doesn't contain itself. So let's uh, just check that that is, uh, oh, I didn't actually make a set here. Let's do it. Um, what should we call this set? Um, let's call it the barber, right? Remember the barber is, shaves every man who doesn't shave himself. So uh, uh, that's a good name for this set where the membership test is doesn't contain itself. Doesn't contain self. Okay, there's my barber. And uh, let's just check that uh, fizz is in barber. Oh, it doesn't work. Type error. Hmm. Type error. Type error. Well, I guess, uh, you know, if we tried to check if fizz contained itself, fizz is going to try to do arithmetic on it, expects a number. Um, so let's just be a little bit more careful with this. Let's catch that type error. And, um, and if if we try to check if something contains itself and it just totally chokes on it, then it clearly doesn't. So if it raises an error, we're just going to return true because we're going to say that, yeah, it really doesn't contain itself. And uh, I'll be careful. I'll, I'll cr catch the correct error. And okay, it works, sort of, right? Fizz is in Barber. Um, you know, every all the sets that we did so far are going to be in this set, though, because we haven't actually figured out how to make something that's not in this set, right? Because to make something that's not in the barber set, it would have to contain itself. Huh. Uh, well, we could do that. That's not so hard because, uh, let's call it W, because it's the weird, it's gonna be a weird set. set. Um, in fact, maybe all it will contain is itself. Reasonable? Yeah. So, uh, but what's the membership test again? Uh, I guess it's something that should return true only if it's, uh, is that one set. But we haven't defined it yet. It hasn't been created. It's actually in the middle of being initialized when we call it. So here's what I'm going to do. Uh, I'm just going to pass it nothing. I'm, I'm not going to pass it a function. I'll just pass it none. Um, I can pass it anything here. And I'll just define it afterwards because in the next line of code, now I have W. I have a name for this set. And so I can define the member test explicitly 
to be um, a new function which is just going to check to see if the element actually is w. All right, this, this should stretch your brain a little bit. Um, oops, okay, lambda x, x is w. There you go. And uh, my claim is that w, oops, I always want to write is not in, but it's just not in barber. Boom, there we go. Um, we have a set that contains itself. We can check that this is really true because you see w in w. Um, is true. So, um, so W is in W, therefore W is not in Barber. Piece of cake. We're we're, we're rolling here. Um, so uh, it seems like everything is fine. I actually just defined an object, which is exactly the one that we weren't supposed to be able to find, right? It has, uh, it contains everything that doesn't contain itself. Um, but if you remember how the proof of um, Russell's paradox goes, I use the finger quotes because really it's just a theorem. Um, at some point you have to check, is Barber in Barber? Let's just try. Um, I, but I don't know, wait, should I assert that it is in there or that should I assert that it's not? In fact, I won't do anything because I want to know. I don't even know, is it in there or not? So, um, is the Barber in the Barber? Weird. And then let's just... And so this will, this is going to evaluate whether the barber is in barber evaluates it true or not. Um, and then it'll tell us, so true or false. Um, you ready for this? What is it? Oh, and you probably saw this coming. Let's do this. Look here. Um, this, of course, is the error and this is the call stack. It's a big long call stack because it is a recursion error, right? So somehow this process of going, so if it's in the set, then it's not in the set. And if it's not in the set, then it is in the set. Uh, the computer itself, the program got caught in that same loop, but that loop was implemented recursively and therefore you get a recursion error. If we did this with some kind of loop, we would get an infinite loop. Um, so once, the, once we got a thousand recursive calls, uh, or a thousand function calls on the call stack, um, right? We get this recursion error, and so we can't actually answer this question of whether Barber is in Barber. And oftentimes, if you get a recursion error, uh, that probably means you have a bug in your code, like you did something wrong, uh, most of the time. Uh, in this case, uh, in terms of what the code is supposed to mean, it really is expressing what it means. It's not that there is really an error in the code. It's just ask, we're just asking it to do something that's impossible. Okay, so that would be, uh, that's our implementation of Russell's paradox or the kind of Barber uh, paradox implemented in code. And you see how the kind of paradox aspect, that logical contradiction that you can construct is, um, is then turned into a kind of infinite recursion. If you found this kind of coding approach to uh, math and set theory interesting, or if you just want to learn more about these Python tricks and writing good Pythonic code, especially for data structures, I highly recommend you check out my notes on data structures, uh, which are all available on GitHub. Just look up Don Shihi on GitHub, uh, Don Shihi with no spaces. And uh, my data structures repository includes the full text of a data structures book, but also a whole library of implementations of the data structures code. So you can also pip install DS2, um, which will give you um, a bunch of standard data structures. The course, uh, the book for, was for a course that covered all the standards from uh, lists and uh, hash tables and priority queues and balanced binary search trees and graphs. So um, a lot of cool data structures in there and they're all implemented, all explained uh, very succinctly and clearly in good Pythonic code. Um, so I highly recommend that you check it out.